Oh yes, I know you can see me on your screen, but I am just an imaginary picture of an atom. Real atoms are too tiny. You can only see them under a very special microscope. Actually, this big microscope can be called a machine. Okay, now you know that we're so tiny that we can only be seen with machines. Now I have a question for you. Do you know the meaning of your name? Very good if you know it. If you don't know, ask your parents. But I also know the meaning of my name. It means that which can't be cut, that which is uncuttable. Actually, it's a Greek word, which means it is indivisible, which means it can't be divided further or can't be cut further. Let me show you something. Let me ask this man to cut the apple in his hand in half. Now do it again. Please do it again. Keep doing it until you can't cut it any further. Yes, this is the smallest part which you can't cut any further. But it can also be cut under a microscopic machine. So, if you get a part so small which can't be divided further, it is called indivisible. It can't be cut further. It is uncuttable. It is an atom. Let me tell you a secret. Everything is made up of atoms. You, this water, this table, this blackboard, this fan, these fruits, everything. Everything is made up of atoms. Oh, you're right, too. Everything is made of molecules, but all molecules are made of atoms. Confused? Go to the blackboard and write any sentence. Good. Now this is a whole sentence. Now circle all of the words in this sentence. Now let's take a word and circle all the letters of R with some other color. Very good. You see, this sentence is made up of words, but words are made up of letters. So letters are the smallest units of a sentence. Similarly, everything is made up of molecules, but molecules are made up of atoms. So atoms are the smallest unit of everything. Look at this. See, water is made up of water molecules, but water is made of atoms. There are two atoms of hydrogen and one atom of oxygen in each water molecule. So when atoms join together, they form a molecule. And when molecules join together, they form a thing. So now you understand. Good. Hmm, <sighs> so now, friends, now I would show my body. <laughs> yes, I would show different parts of my body. In the center of an atom, there is the nucleus. It is made up of even smaller parts. These are called protons and neutrons. Each of these protons carries a positive electrical charge. The neutrons are equally as heavy as protons, but don't carry any electrical charge. So, the nucleus of an atom is positively charged due to protons. Now, electrons are outside the nucleus. They are orbiting around the nucleus. The electrons carry a negative charge. The total negative charge of electrons is equal to the positive charge of the nucleus. So in total, an atom is neutral. The positive charge of the protons is neutralized by the negative charge of the electrons. So it is like plus one is neutralized by minus one and overall charge of an atom becomes zero. The electrons are moving outside the nucleus at a very high speed. Can they run away from the nucleus? No, they can't run away. Every atom has the same number of protons, electrons, and neutrons. So there is an attraction between equally strong negative and positive charges. Due to this attraction, electrons can't run away, as positively charged protons keep them pulled towards them. Hope this is all clear to all of you. Otherwise, you can always go back and see it again. Now let me explain how we atoms bond together to form a molecule. It's just like the letters getting together to form a word. Electrons keep moving in shells outside the nucleus. Each shell contains a fixed number of electrons. The first shell can have two electrons, and the second can have eight electrons. The third can hold 18, and the fourth can hold up to 32 electrons. The atoms in the outermost shell of an atom are called valence electrons, and the outermost shell is called the valence shell. Atoms bond with other atoms to form a molecule with these valence electrons in the valence shell. Remember one thing, atoms always keep trying to fill their shells. Take, for example, an oxygen atom. In its second shell, it can hold up to eight electrons, but the oxygen atom only has six electrons in its second shell, so it is always looking for more electrons to fill its shell. Now, here is a hydrogen atom. It only has one electron in its outer shell, but it can hold two electrons in its shell. 
so it is also looking for more electrons. So the oxygen atom bonds with two hydrogen atoms to fill its valence shell by sharing one electron from each hydrogen atom. In this way, the hydrogen atom's requirement is also fulfilled, as they can also fill their shells to their capacity of two electrons in their valence shells. By combining together, they become water molecules. So friends, now you understand us. I am part of you. So learn us well by watching this video again and again.